<laughs> I think we shut it off. And so uh, be careful what you pray for, right? You can get plenty of heat. And, well, it's working well, and it's got uh, some fresh air coming in. So wonderful. So good to see you folks today. It is uh, the day the Lord has made, and we're choosing to rejoice and to be glad in it. Somebody had an extra year of life to recognize. The young lady here, 89 years of age. Oh, I see a hand over there, Mr. Jim. You're today. He's what, 49? 10 years behind him. You're in church, Jim. Well, uh, you know, we rejoice and let the, teach us the number of days of right that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Solace of excellence and Moses. Oh, there's. Em, oh, Emmy, how, and how young are you? 35. Oh. <laughs> Did keep going down. There's a, bunch, there's a bunch of liars in this church. That's right. Yeah, sure. Lord, help us. 35. All right, who else had a birthday this week? Sherry? Wonderful. Last Sunday? Okay, you're 49 too? Uh, and that's not, all right, so woo, we're grateful. So, um, so I think in order, just we've got 90, Lila's 90 years young, and then 89. Uh, any other 89s? 88. 88. And then Jim Wither, Jim uh, Phillips is 87 ish, 88 ish, right? And then what, you're 70? And aren't the three amigos, you, 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 and you are like all the same, right? Or Curly Bow and Larry or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Curly. There's Curly over here, yeah. Oh, well, you know, every day is a gift and we're rejoicing in that. So our call to worship today, uh, it just helps us to reflect uh, on what we're going to share a little bit after communion. So we'll have our worship time, we'll have communion so the kids can celebrate it with us, and then we'll have our a devotional time. It's taken from Colossians, and this is the theme of where we're going. Uh, together, let's read. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above not on things that are below. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Yeah, that's going to be a springboard of where we're going today and days to come. Father, thank you for this wonderful time as we come together, beauty of the springtime, and we thank you, Father, for life. We have new life in Christ, born again. Uh, as was asked, how can somebody enter back into the womb? But Lord, spiritually, every one of us, new birth in Christ, a new creation. Old things have been passed away. Behold, all things are new. And it is a foreshadowing of future glories where everything will be made new, heaven and earth. We rejoice and look forward to that time. Would you bless? us your presence here your spirit moving please accept our worship and our adoration and our praise for you are wonderful mighty god and we are so thankful you are majestic and so we sing of that today oh lord how majestic is your name in jesus name Life is a roller coaster. Anybody identify with that? Now, you think about it. Great America and Cedar Point people pay <laughs> to get shaken up. <laughs> and, and it's been a while, uh, but people do that. In general, though, life uh, is, is, can be 
a joy and in many ways, of course, a challenge. I'm a little warm today. Uh, that is not uh, water. <laughs> that is Diet Coke. <laughs> we got back in at 1.30 this morning. So uh, the Lord is good. That's my 15th cup of coffee. <laughs> Uh, but yesterday was quite a day, so um, a week from today, Noel will graduate in this conference. Uh, yesterday was a track meet, so we went down there, uh, and uh, so as a thrower, the shot put went, uh, well, disc went in, he didn't care for that, and, and, and did, you know, he didn't put a lot of effort in it. Shot put, he did a PR for himself this year, but he did not where he wanted to go, so he was disappointed. Uh, then the hammer throw, and that is his forte. And so uh, we get there, and it, we're with the, the parents that we've been friends with for the last four, four years. And uh, uh, there is a good buddy of his that they're kind of rivals. So the backstory is, last week, uh, in the hammer throw, Noah broke the 12-year-old school record of the hammer throw. That's the 18 pound shot put with the cord and you have to whirl it around and throw it. So he broke the record last week and so it was, the record was a, a week old. <laughs> Till his buddy broke it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you get it? So we're sitting next to his folks. <laughs> Yay! A new record for the school. But my son lost. At that moment, just the flood of to be I mean, we love him. The two boys are, are buddies, and it's great in the family. But he just beat up my son. And he only had one week to enjoy that mark. And he took it away from him. Well, I, I must admit, I just, it personally, in prayer, I said, Lord, this just hurts. I, I mean, you're happy for this, and, and it's the right thing to do, and rejoice with those who rejoice. And then, but my son lost. You know, he only had one week to enjoy it. And who does this guy think he is? <laughs> you, know, you, you know how the parent can kick in a little bit there. And then Noah had a cup, he, he, he faulted on a couple, because he tries so hard, and he steps out or throws it, and then he, he did one, so he qualified for finals. And uh, in the finals, he crushed the new record. <laughs> so here we got to enjoy it now, right? So, you know, we're going like, and now they're feeling the same way we were feeling, you know? But we're Christians, so we're nice to each other. Uh, actually, he came over me, and they, the boys hugged and were encouraging each other both times. It was just a precious thing to see, and what the other family, and the gentleman, he's newly married, his wife and family are there. And, and, but he, he, it's okay that he lost. Does he? <laughs> he broke a record of the shot put that day, broke the school record. So he did pretty well. In fact, they were, it was a tremendous meet, and, and Noah threw, he went from 55-4, 55 meters, to 59 something meters. So it's like, where did that come from? He had to do a, a t urine test. No, See, no, he didn't. <laughs> but, but, okay, so the, the life. Now they don't always end up that way. And quite honestly, next week's another meet. And if you've had kids in sport, you understand the ups and the downs, whether it's in sports or life or whatever, life has its ups and downs. And in some ways you think you have more downs than ups, but ultimately we look to the Father as he directs and guides us. I guess as, a, as an introduction in thinking about this, today's just kind of an overview. Oh, I got plenty of time today. Um, you made me nervous, didn't I? At least it's not as hot as it was. I, I kind of coined a new term. I don't know if it's new with me, but it is uh, the pandemic slump. Mm -hmm. the, this pandemic slump 
that has, you know, it, it's, it's like, I don't know, you gotta get up and do things. It, it's hard to believe a year or two ago all the things we were doing and now we we're kind of used to slowing down and doing this and doing a little bit more. I, I even think about even in this last year, um, we were days away of putting more money and re-upping our membership at a, at a gym. <laughs> literally days away till the first pandemic hit. We saved hundreds of dollars not doing it, but so we had no exercise equipment and, and we did things, but I, I'm just thinking back, you know, those were just, you stayed home, you stayed away from people, you couldn't go out to eat, we were limited in church experience. We just got in kind of a slump, you know, and I found even exercise, even though I, I, I have, it, it was hard. I didn't want to get up and do push-ups. It was unspiritual. I should pray more. <laughs> in bed, meditate. Mm -hmm. Or, or ex you know, the elliptical machine in the garage because we couldn't go out and do anything in the winter. And it was difficult. And maybe you experienced that in many different, whether it was to have your private devotions or, and, and you know, even the, even the uh, mental sharpness over the months just kind of slip because you're watching a lot of TV, maybe hopefully you're reading, there's nothing evil, but we just kind of easily got into a slump and slowed, and, and life just slowed down from 180 miles an hour to about 30 on a good day. And now here we are loosening up and say, okay, God, and, and now having to step forward, are you finding it a little bit, little bit difficult? Some, it's nice when we go out and have to eat where we haven't been able to do or come to church, but to, to continue to move. so. As introduction to that, um, Paul in Church of Colossae, Colossae is in Turkey, and he's writing to them. Uh, the first chapter and in, in the second are tremendous written theological perspectives of the supremacy and deity of Christ. The Church of Colossae was struggling with who Christ is, and they were making sure that uh, all the heresies and in the New Testament era, would, the false insights were coming, were downplaying who Christ was. And in his uh, first couple of chapters are extremely important to recognize that he is ultimately God who was part of the Trinity, who created with God the Father and Spirit from the beginning, past, present, and future, ruling and reigning, and to make sure that the, the Trinity aspect is, is perfect. In the midst of this, he's reminding the church of Colossae, because it's in the middle of Turkey and in his missionary journeys was there. He reminds them that there's going to be people coming that's going to, is going to distract them. And in the midst of life's ups and downs, they're going to maybe fall into a slump, maybe just forget what the priority, they're gonna be struggling with this, some theological issues. <coughs> But he reminding them, hey, make sure you keep seeking first the kingdom, setting Christ as your goal, and continually putting off that which is of the old nature and putting on which is of the new nature. So let me read a couple of verses in 1 Corinthians, Colossians chapter 3. Uh, then if you have been raised with Christ, now some translations say therefore, which means as a result of what has come before that which they were talking about not being somebody disqualifying you and, and stepping us and, and being discouraged in the faith. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek, there's the first point today, the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Second part, set your mind, minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Oh, that's hard to do. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore. Now we'll read that in a few minutes. So the three parts today in the sermon, we're going to be seeking, we're going to be setting in our hearts and minds for, and we're going to be putting. We're going to be putting to death, and like in verse 12, we're going to be putting on. And, and this is familiar with Paul in, in a lot of his epistles, that he just keeps reminding us of that old nature and the constant 
struggle with it. The tensions and the distractions and the ups and the downs and the tensions of life to keep focused, especially when disruptive philosophy or truth is present. So keep seeking, number one. And, and we're just going to do this as, as a rough overlay for today and next week tear it apart a little bit. So this keep seeking means to search for desire. Anybody play hide and seek? <laughs> yeah, probably done a few years, huh? But that was always fun to go out there and, and, and find out where they are, hide and seek. When we came back a few weeks ago from, uh, we were in Tennessee, um, the Chrysler, uh, the in-dash um, GPS, it has this home button. So when we were leaving near Chattanooga, we could pull it up. Of course, you can't do it while you're driving, right? Like texting and driving. So you gotta be stuck, station, and you hit the home button, pulls up 2320 Waterford Way, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and then it prints out where we're gonna go to get back, and you follow that. Now, cool, I wish you'd do that, God, for us in life, where are we gonna go? But you know what? It doesn't matter, we know where we're gonna end up. So seeking to search desire has something to do with the priorities of our heart and our mind then or as a result of what has been before because of who Christ is that those are going to come in and probably try to they call it elemental spirits of this world persuasive thought logic untruths to guard ourselves from we need to uh, seek and desire constantly who we are serving and where we're going now interesting word I know you don't care necessarily for grammar and I don't either but in a, this is a present tense which means that it's an ongoing activity. It just didn't happen when you got saved. It just didn't happen yesterday. It's, it's today and tomorrow and the day after. So we continue to seek. We continue to search. We continue, we continue to desire moving. It's, it's dynamic in the flow. And so in our faith, it, it, and that's where the slumps come in our faith once in a while. We just, we maybe have lost sight of. And so we continue to seek the things that are above, that which he is, it talks about, that we raise with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father. I am my private worship, and this has come from Dr. Matthews. One of his major tenets of his teaching was the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. Baptism is a sign, death, burial, resurrection of Christ, but also new life in Christ, we have been baptized with Christ. We have been dead in our trespasses and sin. We have been buried in our sinfulness. We have been raised, born again in Christ, and now we are seated with Christ in the heavenlies as he brings all things under his feet. And I usually use that in a daily prayer, that Lord, I am, I am baptized, and I review it in my mind. I've been baptized with Christ, and I'm sitting spiritually speaking in the presence with Christ in the heavenlies as he's bringing everything under his feet. That's a perspective we can't lose. That's a wonderful thought. So that we keep seeking the things that are above. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, seek first the yeah, all these things will be added unto you. The second thing that we're going to look at, keep sitting. Well, <laughs> you know, sit on. <laughs> now that is more than just um, that, that I am putting down. This word has to do with to concentrate, to listen, to think, be mindful of uh, how difficult, like I mentioned, difficult it was just to, I, I know I should exercise, but I just don't want to. Nobody ever says that, do they? <laughs> or I know I, should do, I shouldn't eat this and push it away, but well, nobody's here, or whatever. Keep Concentrate, keep listening, keep thinking, be mindful. I, I put in here a thought, a spiritual ADD. <laughs> Squirrel. Anybody ever think of that? How easily we're distracted. Oh, we, we're to be setting, we're to concentrate. And it talks about here in the second verse that set your minds on things that are above. This is where our focus is supposed to be. Things that are above, not on the things that are earth. Kind of hard sometimes, because there's plenty of stuff in this earth that we have to deal with it. 
and yet at the same time it's easy to be distracted. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ, Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Oh, what a wonderful concept. We'll appear with him in glory if we don't get distracted. I, I was informed last week that my PowerPoint background, remember that arm that would come up? I think that was rather distracting, wasn't it? I, you know, when I, I try to be cool and do something neat on the computer and look fine here, but when you got it up here and up there, it's like, I could tell after a while you guys were just kind of like, this hurts my eyes to watching this, right? And uh, so I can't be that cool anymore. But uh, we, it's easy to get distracted by things. Here we are to be keep setting, keep focusing, keep concentrating, keep listening, keep mindful. It's easy with the spiritual ADD of heavenly things because ultimately when Christ appears, huh, we'll be shared with him his glory. And that's all part of it. So we're to, we are to seek, we're to set our minds on Christ and we're to put. Now, first of all, did anybody have any difficulties this morning deciding what they were going to wear? <laughs> well, I don't know. We got in so late this morning, I usually have at least a thought what I'm going to wear this morning. And I, I did okay for, for considering. Yeah, yeah, I did all right. Yeah. It looks steppy. Good. Yeah. Um, this concept of being clothed. It, Paul, in all of his epistles, talks about putting on. It's, it's the concept of putting on a garment and taking a garment off. Now, you know, have you done maybe spring cleaning or whatever, and you're outside, or it's rained, and you're just filthy dirty. And you come in, and your wife or whoever says, take everything, drop it right there. Don't even set another inch in the house. You know? And then you can come in and tiptoe and... So take off that which is filthy and dirty and then clean up and put on which is new. That's the concept that Paul's sharing here as he goes forward with this. And uh, let me read in verse uh, 8, no, excuse me, 5. So this is put to death. So we're going to look at two different puts today. We're going to put to death and we're going to put on. Put to death. That, it, 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 it doesn't even use, the, it just says mortify. It says slay, consider as dead. So that's the word that here, it, doesn't, it actually doesn't even say the word death. It says mortify that which is earthly. So put to death therefore what is earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, covetousness which is idolatry. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away. That's the putting off. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie one to another. See what you, that you have put off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. It gets pretty straightforward, and generally Paul does that in his epistles. He has to remind them about who they were in Christ. Now you've got to think, this is Colossae, this is the Greco-Roman world. The practices, especially the morality issues, were just rampant. And to, to become a Christian was a major shift. And, and you know, think about, think about those things as you live in your life. And the people that you had been involved with, with all this behavior, which wasn't pleasing to God, and, and, and of, of, of people that were not following Jehovah God, you would rub shoulders and see them, okay, even family members, if you became Christ and were moved away. So this constant reminder. And so here's the, here's the imagery. He says, mortify, slay, consider us dead. This old nature, this old practice, 
not just there's a list here of external things, but even it goes even further, the old nature internally, this anger, this wrath, this malice, this slander, the obscene talk, that is supposed to be renewed and taken off just like filthy garments. Ongoing. And I don't know about you, but this old nature thing gets old after a while. <laughs> just when you think you got it down, or at least not creeping its ugly head. Something will happen. Old pattern of thinking. Uh, the enemy's awful good at, we're gonna study in, in the Sunday school class in a few moments, uh, fallen angels and, and their exploits and how they especially tempt the body of Christ and Christians. And uh, you know, they know exactly what buttons to push. They've known your ancestors. They've known what weaknesses family lines. They they know you better than you know yourself. Now, that shouldn't scare us. It should quicken us to be on guard. At the same time, this old nature thing, like yesterday, how, there are some times that the intent, you know, <coughs> tension. I'm supposed to be happy, but I want to hit the person or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't want to hit him, but I mean, you know what, it, it, there's the tension there and it comes up and you struggle with it. And yet that's the time, God help us. I, I literally, yes, to God, I'm feeling this hurts. What am I supposed to do with it? You know, and, and maybe we've been there and that's not, it, it wasn't life threatening. And you know, at the moment it was one thing, but uh, yeah, there are those, those, and that old nature comes up and, 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 you, and all that comes back in play. If we're not thinking high thoughts of God, seeking who he is, and uh, are keeping our mind on him, it is so easy to fall back into the cesspool of negative thinking, let alone practice. And so we need to be really guarded uh, and overcome these things and the strongholds and these overt practices that have become a part of our life that if we don't deal with it gets old sometimes just batting it down, doesn't it? I mean, it's a battle some days. And yet, by God's strength, day in and day out, we trust him. And you know what? Sooner or later, we realize it can't be on our strength. It's got to be on his. So we're to put to death, we're to mortify, we're to slay that which is un unbiblical of the old nature. And we're to put on, clothe, wrap ourselves with, and he goes on to say here, if uh, in verse 12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. Well, that's a tough one. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these things, put on, clothe on love, which binds everyone together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and to be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom and singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. And this is kind of a closing for this part today. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever we do in word or deed, give thanks. That's an incredible verse, isn't it? Say that with me, please. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We all know that experiences like yesterday, from the highs and lows, we don't always get the highs. But in all things, giving thanks and recognizing anything that we do in word or in deed. Our goal is to set and to seek, put to death that which is not helpful, appropriate, godly thinking, 
and think of those things which are healthy and good. I think we can identify with, with this to some extent. No, not, I can't identify because I wasn't around at this time. 1665. That was a couple years ago, huh? The Great Plague, as it was called, raged indiscriminately throughout the city of London. Those who could afford to do so fled, and those who remained lived in terror. Those who fled to the country were met by armed villagers who determined to keep the plague out of their communities. Because people did not know what caused the plague, the most elementary hygienic precautions were ignored. For instance, people in the city continued to send parcels of used clothing often the property of the dead, to poor relatives and relief agencies elsewhere. Even clothes stripped off the bodies of plague victims were thus dispatched. Imagine a family receiving such a parcel and proudly and gratefully putting on clothes much better in quality and style than their usual everyday wear, and then they discover that these attractive new garments had been ones of the plague from someone's house. What a horror, they would strip them off and consign them to the, to the fire. It is with the same horror that we should strip off the old man and his deeds. He has the plague. That's a powerful thought, isn't it? Gets close to home. And we can think about other people. Now they're just talking about, think about us. <laughs> Let God deal with them. But then when that old nature, and we're not seeking, and we haven't set our minds on things above, and we are choosing not to remove those garments, as it were, whether we're thinking or practice, and getting rid of it, and maintaining them, and burning them, and putting on that which is new, of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control, we're not going to be able, in whatever we do in word or deed, give everything to the glory of God. It's hindering our, our peace, our success, spiritually speaking, our joy, our happiness, when we ride the fence. And I may be preaching to the choir to some extent, but I also know that no matter what stage you are in life, that old nature can creep up and bite you. And, and it's easy to fall into a pandemic slump or something else when our guard is just not up. And there are times that we just have to be renewed. And, and we've had communion today and our focal point's the cross. I, I just imagine if Christ just, it, it gets sent me, Lord, it's just too much. The devil's tempted me. I, I did what you wanted me to do with the 40 days and 40 nights in the temple. I put up with these 12 disciples and one of them betrayed me. I've done about all of this, Lord, one more, nah, I'm good. And just think if he did that. Sometimes we kind of get that way. Lord, I've just done enough. No, no, because he wouldn't allow it if he didn't, if the circumstance of our life and his presence and of those things that are in our lives, he is allowed and we trust him and his grace is sufficient as we go forward. Constantly, because remember it's a present tense, we're constantly seeking, we're constantly being renewed, constantly being aware as we put on the full armor of what God um, has given us, victory, and take, making sure those old clothings of the old way of thinking and the old way of practicing and behaving stay out of our household. And that nothing affects our hearts. Above all else, guard your heart as the wellspring of life. Gracious Father, as we have spent some time in your word today, we're so grateful. Incredibly practical. We're, we're mindful of our weaknesses. We're mindful of um, that which so easily besets us. And it may even be something in the deep reservoir of our heart and my mind, our mind that a spouse or a loved one or a friend doesn't even know. It could be overwhelming guilt and shame and fear. It could be uh, 
a memory of something years ago of which we haven't understood completely the significance of grace. It could be something that you're working on our heart and life that we are just not willing to allow you to work on or to uh, address. But Lord, in all of this, we, we need your help and we desire to be faithful. And Lord, there are times we get in a slump spiritually and we, those times we're easily distracted and the tensions of emotion, let alone the physical challenges. Yet in all of these things, Father, we can trust you. So for whatever purpose you've allowed us to share this scripture today, to remind ourselves of the cross as we have in holy um, union come before you and partaken of the Lord's table as we have uh, partaken of the body of Christ symbolically, partaken of the blood of Christ symbolically and experienced the forgiveness and newness of life. May we continue to pursue that which is holy and just and righteous. And Lord, may there be uh, relief from those oppressive aspects that the enemy, who is so good to discourage and to thwart and disrupt. We trust you. We're grateful, Father, for all that you've done and the amazing grace that you have given us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound.